Hey there, welcome to Creative Editing, a workshop provided by PSTV. This is Manuel, and let's get started. So, what is Creative Editing? First, watch this example. Take a look at the before and afters. So let your creativity fly and let's do it! This workshop explores the basics of picture editing and some elemental techniques of photo manipulation. Everything you're learning here can be utilized on any photo editing software, for smartphones or computers as well. The principles are the same. I am using Pixlr E for demonstration purposes. There is a list of free editing software on the share folder, as well as the materials you will need to follow up with the tutorial. Before we get started, let's go and download this file. Don't forget to come back right after. Important! This tutorial will show you how to perform every operation step by step, so you should be able to use a computer at a beginner level. Let's go! Locate the material folder and right click on it. Click on download. Just wait for it, it's down here. It's gonna take some time. There it is. This folder will automatically download on your downloads folder. Here it is. To make it easier, let's drag and drop it to the desktop folder. Now let's shut this one down. Remember, there is also a resources folder in here. Let's take a look at it real quick. Here, you will find a couple of online editors, a free PNGs website. Remember, PNGs are images with a transparent background. You will notice that an image has a transparent background when it shows a gray and white squares background. All right, now let's go back to the presentation. This is what you will learn in this workshop. You'll have understanding of some principles of photo editing and manipulation. You'll learn how to modify the characteristics of your pictures, such as color, brightness, size, etc. You'll also learn some techniques like selection, resizing, copy and paste, cutout, and distortion. You'll also learn how to add different objects to your compositions. Basically, the fundamental knowledge to make your own art. Let's get started. Type in Pixlr E on your Google search. I'll see you there. Okay, let's find our Google Chrome. Now, select a new window. In the searcher, we're going to type in Pixlr E. There it is. We're gonna find something like this. Click on it. Remember, launch the Pixlr E. Here it is. And this is how it looks. Pixlr is very similar to Adobe Photoshop for those of you who had worked with that before. In Pixlr E, you have different options to start. Let's have a look at them. The first one is Create New. The second one is Open Image which is used if you already had yours. And then a stock search. I really like this one because you can use it for any single image that you want to start as a background. Let's say you want to use a car. Type in car and you'll see. When you go to create new, you'll find different sizes of canvas. In this case, we're going to go to the full HD but you can see that they have some of them for Instagram, some of them for Facebook, but in this case, we're gonna use full HD. The next step is to create the name of your project. In this case, it'll be PSTV test one. There it is. The next step is to decide if you want a background or not. So let's say you want to start from a color background. 
If you click on this, you'll find different colors. You can pick any of them as a star, but also you can pick the color of your preference. Let's say this one. However, if you know the Pantone code of your color, you can just type it in here. Then you just hit create. But for this tutorial, we're going to use a transfer background. So let's click that out. And now just click on create. All right, so this is our interface. This one is pretty similar to Adobe Photoshop. Okay, this is the first thing you need to know. This space right here is your canvas. This is where you will work. This interface works with layers located on this side of the window. But we'll come back to this in a second. Now, let me show you some tools. On this side of your screen, right below the house, you'll find your tools. The arrange tool, the selection tool, the lasso tool. You will also find some different options in here, like add a new image, open an image, Edit, we'll come back to this one because we're gonna use it a lot. Image size, canvas size, add a new layer, select adjustments, which we're gonna use a lot also, and then filters. But we'll come back to this in a second. All right, so here we are. Our first step is to add a new layer. So remember, layers are located on the right side of your screen. Click on the plus sign. You'll get a window like this one. Click on image. Go to our materials folder. Let's start with the wooded path. All right, here we have it. Let me give you a quick tip. Go to the right side of your window. This slider right here will help you to zoom in and out of your canvas. So let's go back to it. All right, that's a fair amount. Now with the arrange tool selected, you'll go back to your image and let's click and hold on it. You should be able to do something like this. There is. Now just click outside the canvas. All right, now we have our first image. All right, so let's work with this image real quick. Click on your image. Let's go to adjustment. Under adjustment, let's look for exposure. Click on it. Let me just move this a second. Exposure will allow you to get a darker image or a brighter image. In this case, we're gonna go with a brighter image. How about around 20? If you click on this and hold down, you will be able to compare what you had before and what you have now. You see, before, after, before, after. I think I'm happy with this. So now let's click apply. All right. Whenever you want to deselect any image, just click out of there. Now it's time to add our next image. Remember, click on the plus sign and click on image. Now we're gonna use the road one. Notice that this image doesn't have any background. You'll see it in a second. All right, there we have it. This one is a little bit bigger. So clicking on this square and holding it down, you'll be able to reduce the size of it. So I will say something like this, okay? And now if you click and hold down in the middle of the image, you'll be able to move it around. I'll say, let's use it on this path that they have already. All right, let's say something like this. All right, this is looking a little, Weird. Let's make it fit in. Now, let's go to edit and choose free distort. 
when you choose 3D Start, you'll see that the squares on the corner of the image are now circles. If you click and hold down on this one, you'll see how the image is getting distorted. If you click on the other side, you'll be able to make it a little bit even. How about that? I don't know. Let's click on this one again and see what we can do. All right, how about... Okay, how about there? I'll say that there is pretty good. How about if we pull it up from this side a little bit? How about from this one? Mm, all right, that's looking way better. Okay, if you click in the middle and hold it down, you'll be able to move it again. So you can position it in a better angle. So I'll say maybe just right there. All right. Now I'm gonna click outside the canvas. It'll ask, do you wanna apply the distort? Yes, I want to. Now, click outside the image again. I'll say that this image needs a little bit of a darker move. So let's click back in the image again and go to adjustment. If we go to adjustment and work on exposure again, this time pull it down to your left. And let's make this row a little bit darker so you can blend better with the background. I'll say some somewhere like that. Let's say 45, there it is. Remember, click apply to make the changes. It's looking pretty good now. All right, we're getting there. Now let's add our next image. In this one, we're gonna use the running man. All right, let's open it. Now this whole canvas is looking a little bit small for me. So remember, let's go to navigate and using the slider, let's go to somewhere close to 70. All right, that'll be good. There it is. Now it's time to show you a new technique. In this case, we want to code out every single person in this image. So we're gonna start with the little girl. To do this, we'll go to our tool panel on the left side of our screen and use the lasso tool. Click on it. Now with the lasso tool selected, you'll notice a little plus sign in here. Using that plus sign as a guide, you're gonna click and hold down and go around the girl all the way until you have all of her body cover. There it is. Do you see the line of ants walking around her? All right, that means that she is selected and ready to go. All right, guys, so with the girl selected, make sure you are on the right layer, the running man in this case. Click on it, make sure it's blue, and then go to edit on the left upper side of your screen. Now hit cut. And now go back to edit and hit paste. Now the girl was cut out of the first image and it became its own layer right here. Now let's rename it to make it easy to work with. Go to layer, make sure you have it selected and then click on the three dots on the left right here. Under name, type in the new name. Let's call it girl. And now let's just hit X. There it is. 
Now make sure you are on the girl ledger and select the arrange tool on your left. Clicking and holding down, let's move the girl to this part of the background. Alright. Now using the squares on the corner, let's make it smaller. See that? Alright. Maybe right there. Cool. All right, now let's work a little bit with her. Let's make some adjustments. Let's go to our adjustment window right here. Click on it and let's work with the exposure. Let's make it darker so you can blend in better with the background. Maybe somewhere like that. Remember, if you hold down this right here, you can compare how it was before and how it's now. I think that's good. Let's try something different now. How about if we make it a little bit more colder looking? Right now it's like too warm. So let's make it a little bit colder. Let's go back to adjustment. And let's press under temperature and tent. Click on it. All right. So temperature works this way. If you pull it down to your left, you're gonna make it more colder or bluish. And if you pull it down to your right side, you're gonna make it more warmer or yellowish. I say in this case, we need it more bluish, a little bit more colder probably somewhere around the 25 or let's go a little bit down and go maybe minus 30 all right that will work let's compare it that was before warmer that's now now let's just click apply i think the girl looks pretty good Let's click outside the canvas to see. Okay, I, I think we're missing something, maybe a shadow. So let's click on her again and let's go back to the left upper side of your screen and let's go to filter. And let's go down to drop shadow and let's click on it. All right, so now we have this window with the controls right here. The first thing we want to move is the offset. So let's go and move the offset Y. Now we can see that the image is dropping a shadow. How about right there? Let's make it 10 on the offset Y. Now let's go to the offset X. Probably somewhere like that, minus 10 maybe. Now I feel like the offset Y is a little bit too much. So let's make it, let's go up now. How about there? Maybe, actually maybe there. Let's say three. All right. So now, how about if we work with the opacity? The bigger the number, the darker the opacity. So let's go to a smaller number, maybe around 40. And okay, I think that looks pretty fair. Let's click on apply. Let's click outside the canvas again. That's looking very, very good. Now let's do the whole process with the boy. Follow up. Remember, you gotta make sure you are on the right layer, in this case, running man. Let's make it blue by clicking on it. Now we go to edit on the left upper side of the screen. And here, cut. So let's cut the kid out. And now, clicking on edit again, let's just paste it. 
There it is. Now the boy has his own ledger. So we go, let's rename it. Remember, you gotta go to the three dots on the left. Let's name it boy. Then just click the X. Now, making sure that you have the boy layer, click on. Let's go back to our, our wrench tool on the left side of your screen. And now, let's move the boy by clicking and holding down on him. How about there? I think I like it there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. All right, so remember to do that. Just go to the squares on the corner let's say this side and just click and hold down and make it a little bit smaller I think this is all right now let's go to adjustment to make it bland so remember we're using exposure when I go as down as steady in this case, we can go maybe to minus 25. Let's compare it. We click on this and hold it down. That's the after. This is the before. That's the after. Before, after. That looks good. Let's click on apply. That's it. How about we do now the dropping shadow? Let's go to filter. Let's click on drop shadow. And now let's play a little bit. Somewhere like that. Let's make it a little bit brighter. And we can also play with the blurriness of it. To make it more appealing and to make it blend better. I think maybe somewhere 20 is cool. All right, that looks good. And now let's go to adjustment and let's go to temperature. Let's play a little bit. Maybe somewhere around minus 15. Should be good. Maybe a little bit more bluish. Let's go to minus 25. There it is. Now we should have the man on his own. Should be cut out already. Let's make sure, click on his layer. That's it, let's go down. How about if we click on the three dots and rename it. Let's call it man. And then just click on the X. Now, by clicking in the middle of the image and holding down, we're going to position him on somewhere like around here. This guy's looking a little bit smaller if we talk about distances in here. So how do we make it bigger? We go to the squares and click and hold down and pull, pull it up. I'll say that maybe somewhere like right there. That's cool. All right, so now let's repeat the process of blending. Let's make this guy look a little bit bluish, a little, just a little. So we go to temperature and remember to make it bluish or colder We go to the left side. How about there? Let's say 20, minus 20 is fine. And let's compare it. Remember, hold this down. After, before, after. Before, after. It looks better now. All right, so now we need to add a dropping shadow to this guy. How do we do that? Remember, we go to filter. We go down until we see the drop shadow and then click on it. And then here are the controls. First thing we want to move is the offset Y and maybe place it around there. 
Let's move the offset X a little bit. Maybe right there. Let's play with the blurness to make it disappear a little bit and make it more natural. Somewhere around 20 is fine. And let's change the opacity. Remember, the bigger the number, the darker, and the smaller the number, the brighter. So right now, let's go to somewhere around here, 35. All right, so now we have this scene, right? We have this guy who is winning over these two kids. Oh, this guy is thinking, I'm living the dream. I'm beating the kids down. No, I don't like that. So now we're gonna add our next image. All right, let's make it stand out. Let's use this triangle right here. So click on the triangle and then click and open. All right, so now let me show you this. Let's go back to the layer side of the screen. If we have a look at this, you'll see that these layers are in a certain order, right? We have the wooded pad, which is our background image. And then we have the road. Then we have the man, then we have the girl, and then we have the boy. Let's say we want to do this in order, right? So first we got the wooded path. Then we got the rope. But then I want to have the girl. Let's click on the girl. Let's click and hold it down. And let's put this one down like below the man layer. Now let's do the same with the boy. Let's put it below the man. And there he is. And now let me show you something real quick. So the triangle is right in front of the man, right? But we don't want that because it's looking weird. How about if we had the triangle layer below the man and see what happens. So let's go back to all layers. Let's pick on triangle, click and hold down and put that below the man. All right, let's see if it works. All right, that looks way better. So let's go back to layers and remember that the order of these layers impact your image. So the first layer that you have on top is your first image. So it's the image in the front. And the last one is the image in the background. And the ones in between just go with the flow, right? And now let's click on the triangle layer. And clicking in the middle and holding it down, we can adjust it. Let's say we want this like around it. Like she's really happy of being winning to these kids. All right, let's make it a little bit bigger. And I think that stand out a little bit more and make it look right cooler, all right? Awesome. Hmm. Now, it doesn't seem fair for this guy to be winning, right? So let's do this. Let's add some more images. Wow, this one is really big. Okay, let's make it smaller. How do we do that? Remember, we pull it down from the squares on the corner. So I'm gonna do that and probably like around there, it'll be cool. And now clicking and holding down in the middle, I'm gonna move it and I think I'm gonna place this one like right about there. I think I want to rotate this a little bit. How do we do that? Clicking on this circle right here, you'll be able to rotate your image. You see that? Let's say like right there. All right, I think that looks good. Now let's make some adjustments to this image. How about saturation? Because it look a little bit pale to me. So let's make it a little bit more vibrant. How do we do that? Moving the saturation up. Let's see. All right, I think maybe like right there on the 60s. Okay, I like that. Nice. Let's compare it. 
Hold this down, remember. Right here. Before, after. Before, after. Alright, now click on apply. But wait. What is this guy waiting for? What are we trying to say? You'll see this in a second. Alright, let's add a new layer and a new image. Hit the plot sign. Hit image, and now we're gonna introduce our tiger. There it is. Let's click on open. Now, here's the tiger. So the tiger looks like angry already. Let's say this tiger is a threat to this guy. Mm, first thing that we're gonna do with this image is flipping it horizontally. All right, so now click on edit and click on transform so let's click on flip horizontal all right you see the tiger now it's facing the right way all right looks pretty good to me and i'm telling you i really like this because now it's not fair for the guy <laughs> but wait let's make it fair for the guy let's make it fair because we're already telling him to wait right let's give him a lot of clue so now what we're going to do is add some text. So to add a text, we'll go to the plus sign again and click on the test. All right. Now let's give this guy a hint of what's happening. All right, there it is. So now that we have our text in there, let's make some adjustments. So if we go to the upper side of our screen, we have the text controls in here. So first thing that we want to move is the color, right? So let's pick a color. Let's say we want this text to be yellow. How about we change the font? Um, let's look for a really nice font in here. Oh, here it is. This is the one that we're going to use. All right. That's looking very good. Now let's move this a little bit below, like let's put it around here. And how about if we make it stand out a little bit? If you go to a style from the text tool controls and you click on this, you can add some stuff to your text. So now let's create an outline. It's looking good. All right. But I'll say the how about if we make it instead of gray white mm, I don't know I don't like it maybe if we change the size of it maybe just one nah let's say red let's see what happens if we put red oh red looks way better right all right so yeah I like that now let's make it drop a shadow there it is. All right. I like it already. That's good. Click the X. I think we can rotate this one also. So remember, if you use a circle right here, you'll be able to rotate it. So click and hold it down and go to whatever direction you think. In my case, I'm going to do it this way. So what do you think? I think this is it. I like it. I hope you like it. I hope you have fun. So now let's learn how to export this out of here. So you can have your image and share it with your friends. Let's go to file. Let's click on save. Right? So now we have this window when it's asking us for a file name and we already had a name for this one. We want this one because it has a background. We want this one to be a JPEG. This is the file type of every single regular image. Image with a background are JPEGs. Let's say we want it 100%, right? Changing the quality from low to medium or high makes the file size bigger or smaller. So in this case, I'm gonna go 100%. And you see this change, right? This doesn't matter that much, but sometimes you just want uh, a smaller size file. 
for whatever reason. Let's say you are using this image for a website, right? But in this case, we're gonna go to 100%. 2.5 megabytes is not that much. So it's all good. Let's click on download. If you come down here, you'll see that your image is being downloaded and now it's done. And then hit close. So that's it. This is the tutorial. I hope you like it. I hope you can make it work. I'm giving you the files so you can have this same project done. You can try with your own images. You can come up with your own and I want to see what you got. So please send us your work via email to pstv at filasd.org. I'll see you in the next one. Have fun. Stay creative.